Have you ever wondered why Samaritans were despised in biblical times? What is the intriguing story that unfolds across the pages of history? This captivating chapter surely sheds light on the complexities of human relationships in ancient times. So, without further ado, let's dive into this video today to learn more about why everybody hated the Samaritans. Here we begin. The term Good Samaritan is commonly used to describe someone who helps others, but not many know who the Samaritans were in the Bible. They were a group of people who lived in the region of Israel after the Assyrian conquest. So the Samaritans are an ethno-religious group whose roots trace back to the ancient Israelites. They reside in the Levant and follow a faith called Samaritanism, which is similar to Judaism but has some differences. According to Samaritan tradition, their ancestors were from the northern Israelite tribes that weren't deported by the Neo-Assyrian Empire after the Kingdom of Israel fell. They see Samaritanism as the true religion of the ancient Israelites and view modern Judaism as a related but changed religion. For Samaritans, Mount Gerizim, near Nablus, and Biblical Shechem, holds the utmost significance, considering it the holiest place on earth instead of the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. They believe the split between them and the Jews originated from Eli, who established a competing shrine at Shiloh against Mount Gerizim. Once a sizable community, the Samaritan population declined greatly due to harsh repression during revolts against the Byzantine Empire. Many Samaritans converted to Christianity during the Byzantine rule and later to Islam after the Muslim conquest of the Levant, leading to a further decrease in their numbers. By the 12th century, according to estimates by the Jewish traveler Benjamin of Tudela, only around 1 to 900 Samaritans remained in the regions of Palestine and Syria, in Jesus' time. They continued to exist until the time of Jesus and are still around in limited numbers today. The Bible contains several stories about the Samaritans, and the tension between Jews and Samaritans is a recurring theme in the Gospels. To understand the origin of the Samaritans, we need to go back to the days of the kings of Israel. After King Solomon's reign, his son Rehoboam made reckless decisions in the 10th century. These actions led to corruption and sin in both the northern and southern kingdoms of Israel, despite warnings from God's prophets. As a consequence, God announced that other nations would conquer them. Wicked rulers particularly plagued the northern kingdom. In 722 BC, it fell to the Assyrians, and many Israelites were taken captive to Assyria. However, some people remained in the land and intermarried with foreigners. This mixing of cultures and peoples contributed to the formation of the Samaritans, who were seen as impure and deviant by the Jewish society of that time. Origins of the Samaritans In ancient times, Jewish and non-Jewish people were called Samaritans. Around 586 BC, the Babylonian Empire conquered the southern kingdom of Judah, the city walls of Jerusalem were destroyed, and the temple was torn down. The first mentions of the Samaritans in the Bible can be found in the books of Ezra and Nehemiah, which date back to the 5th century BC. During this time, the Persian Empire replaced Babylon as the dominant power in the region. Nehemiah, a Jewish man, got permission from the Persian king to rebuild Jerusalem. However, the Samaritans who lived nearby didn't like Nehemiah's plan. They caused trouble for Nehemiah and his team, who were trying to rebuild Jerusalem. This conflict marked the beginning of a long period of hostility between the Jews and the Samaritans. In ancient times, Samaria served as the capital of the northern kingdom of Israel. After the fall of Israel, the region of Samaria was situated in the middle of what used to be the northern kingdom. Samaria lay between Galilee to the north and Judea to the south during Jesus' time. Today, the region of Samaria is located in the northern part of the West Bank. Only a few hundred Samaritans remain, following their faith based on the Pentateuch and Mount Gerizim. History of Samaritans The similarities between Samaritans and Jews were so strong that the rabbis of the Mishnah had trouble distinguishing between them. The exact time of the split between Samaritans and Jews is uncertain with estimates ranging from the time of Ezra to the destruction of Jerusalem in 70 CE and the Bar Kokhba revolt from 132 to 136 CE. The development of a distinct Samaritan identity happened gradually over many centuries, 
with a significant break thought to have occurred during the Hasmonean period. According to Samaritan belief, they are descendants of the tribes of Ephraim and Manasseh from ancient Samaria. They attribute the split between them and the southern Israelites led by Judeans to the biblical priest Eli. Eli is depicted as a false high priest who took over the priesthood from its rightful holder, Uzi, and set up a rival shrine at Shiloh. This prevented pilgrims from the southern tribes of Judah and Benjamin from visiting the shrine at Mount Gerizim. Additionally, Eli is said to have made a copy of the Ark of the Covenant, which eventually ended up in the sanctuary in Jerusalem. According to Jewish Orthodox tradition, supported by sources like the Bible, Josephus, and the Talmud, the Samaritan's presence is dated to the beginning of the Babylonian captivity. In Rabbinic Judaism, they are referred to as Kuthites or Kuthians, named after the ancient city of Kutha, located in present-day Iraq. Josephus, in his works, also calls Samaritans the Kuthians, particularly when writing about the destruction of the temple on Mount Gerizim by John Hyrcanus. However, biblical accounts suggest that Kutha was one of the cities from which people were brought to Samaria, indicating a connection between the Samaritans and this region. Israeli biblical scholar Shemariahu Talmon supports the Samaritan tradition. He suggests that they are primarily descendants of the tribes of Ephraim and Manasseh, who stayed in Israel after the Assyrian conquest. He argues that 2 Kings 17.24 describes Samaritans as foreigners to exclude them from the Israelites who returned from the Babylonian exile. Additionally, he interprets 2 Chronicles 30-1 as confirming that a significant portion of the tribes of Ephraim and Manasseh, or the Samaritans, remained in Israel after the Assyrian exile. Modern genetic studies support the Samaritan claim that they are descendants of the ancient Israelites. Research by Shen et al. 2004 initially suggested the possibility of intermarriage with foreign women among the Samaritans. However, more recent genetic evidence from the same group indicates a close genetic connection between Samaritans and Kohanim, the priestly caste in Judaism. This suggests that Samaritans can trace their ancestry back to Israelite populations before the Assyrian invasion. This aligns with the fact that Samaritans have maintained endogamous, marrying within the community, and patrilineal marriage customs leading to their genetic isolation over time. Samaritan traditions about their history are found in the Kitab al-Tariq, compiled by Abul Fath in 1355. This text contains accounts of a civil war among the Israelites sparked by Eli, son of Yaphne, who attempted to seize the high priesthood from the descendants of Phinehas. Eli and his followers revolted against the established priesthood and established an alternative temple and altar in Shiloh, replicating the original on Mount Gerizim. The division among the Israelites led to three factions, the Loyalists on Mount Gerizim, Eli's breakaway group, and heretics who worshipped idols associated with Eli's sons. Judaism later emerged from those who followed the example of Eli. While some scholars view this account as fictional, it draws from earlier sources such as Josephus and ancient traditions. Mount Gerizim holds significant religious importance for the Israelites dating back to the time of Joshua's conquest of Canaan. According to the Bible, Moses instructed Joshua to bring the twelve tribes of Israel to the mountains near Shechem, modern-day Nablus. There, they were divided into two groups, with six tribes stationed on Mount Gerizim, known as the Mount of Blessing, and the other six tribes on Mount Abel, known as the Mount of Curse. This division symbolized blessings for those who followed God's commandments and curses for those who... Biblical versions... Accounts of the Samaritan origins found in 2 Kings 17-6-24, Chronicles, Ezra, and Nehemiah vary significantly, reflecting the diverse intentions of their respective authors. These accounts may either suppress or highlight specific narrative details based on the perspectives of the writers. The emergence of the Samaritans as a distinct ethnic and religious community seems to have occurred after the Assyrian conquest of the Israelite kingdom in approximately 721 BCE. According to historical annals, Sargon II of Assyria deported 27,190 inhabitants from the former kingdom. 
Jewish tradition acknowledges the Assyrian deportations, but offers a different ethnic origin for the Samaritans. The Talmud mentions a people called Kuthim, who arrived at the hands of the Assyrians. According to 2 Kings 17.6.24 and Josephus, the people of Israel were taken to various locations by the Assyrian king, Sargon II, while individuals from Babylon, Kutha, Ava, Hamath, and Sepharvaim were brought to settle in Samaria. Due to divine intervention, the Assyrian king sent a priest from Bethel to instruct the new settlers about God's ordinances. However, the result was that these settlers ended up worshipping both the god of the land and their own gods from their countries of origin. In the Chronicles after the destruction of Samaria, King Hezekiah tries to bring together the tribes of Ephraim, Zebulun, Asher, and Manasseh, closer to Judah. During Josiah's time, repairs to the temple were funded by contributions from all the remaining Israelites in Samaria, including those from Manasseh, Ephraim, and Benjamin. Jeremiah also mentions people from Shechem, Shiloh, and Samaria bringing offerings to the house of YHWH. Interestingly, Chronicles doesn't mention any resettlement by the Assyrians. Yitzhak Magan suggests that the Chronicles account might be closer to the truth. The account indicates that the Assyrian resettlement was not successful, and a significant Israelite population remained in Samaria. Some of them fled south after the conquest of Judah and settled there as refugees. Adam Zertal dates the Assyrian attack between 721 BCE and 647 BCE. He notes a specific type of pottery, which he identifies as Mesopotamian, found in the Menashe lands of Samaria. Zertal infers from this pottery evidence that there were three waves of imported settlers during this time. Until the mid-20th century, it was commonly believed that the Samaritans originated from a mix of people in Samaria and other groups during the Assyrian conquest in 722-721 BCE. The biblical account in 2 Kings 17 was often used to explain this. However, a reevaluation of this passage led to a greater focus on the Samaritans' own chronicles. The Samaritans' most complete version of their history became available with the publication of Chronicle 2, alongside various non-Samaritan sources. According to the Samaritans' chronicles, they descend directly from the Joseph tribes, Ephraim and Manasseh. Until the 17th century CE, they had a high priesthood that traced back to Aaron through Eleazar and Phinehas. They claimed to have always lived in their ancient territory and were at peace with other Israelite tribes until Eli disrupted the northern cult by moving from Shechem to Shiloh, attracting some northern Israelites to his new followers. For the Samaritans, this event marked the schism between them and other Israelites. Even today, the Samaritans maintain that they are descendants of the tribe of Joseph. Why were the Samaritans hated in Jesus' time? The Jews deeply disliked the Samaritans during Jesus' era, and this animosity stemmed from several reasons. Firstly, the Samaritans were seen as a blend of spiritually corrupted Israelites and pagan foreigners. They practiced a religion that the Jews viewed as heretical. The Samaritans had their own place of worship on Mount Gerizim and their own version of the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Bible, while rejecting the writings of the prophets and Jewish traditions. Additionally, the Samaritans believed themselves to be the true descendants of Israel and the guardians of the authentic religion. They regarded the Jerusalem temple and the Levitical priesthood as illegitimate. When the Jews returned to rebuild Jerusalem, this belief caused tension and conflict between the two groups. Long ago, the Samaritans and Jews didn't get along. They opposed each other's efforts to rebuild their land, which made things worse. To the Jews, Samaritans were even worse than non-Jews because they thought Samaritans were mixing their religion with foreign beliefs. This created a big division between them. The Good Samaritan Story Jesus often taught important lessons through stories called parables. One famous parable is the Good Samaritan, found in the Bible in Luke 10, 25, 37. In this story, a man asks Jesus how to gain eternal life. Jesus tells him to love God and his neighbor. In the parable, a man was robbed and left on the road, hurt. Both a priest and a Levite saw him but passed by without helping. Then, a Samaritan came along. Even though Jews and Samaritans didn't like each other, the Samaritans helped the injured man. He bandaged his wounds, took him to an inn, and paid for his care. 
Jesus told this story to show that being a good neighbor means helping anyone who needs it, no matter who they are or where they come from. He showed that love and kindness are more important than differences between people. Once, a man who knew a lot about the law wanted to test Jesus. He stood up and asked what he needed to do to live forever. Jesus turned the question back to him. The man said that the law told people to love God and love their neighbors as themselves, but he was still confused and asked, Who is my neighbor? Luke 10, 29. In response, Jesus told a story. He said a man was traveling from Jerusalem to Jericho. On the way, robbers attacked him, took away his clothes, beat him up, and left him half dead. A priest, someone who should help, came down the same road. But when he saw the injured man, he just walked past without helping. Then a Levite, another person who should care, also saw the hurt man but did nothing. Both of them ignored the person in need. Later, a Samaritan who was traveling too came to where the injured man was. When he saw him, he felt sorry for him. The Samaritan went over to the man, bandaged his wounds, poured oil and wine on them to help, and then put him on his own donkey. He took the man to an inn and took care of him. The next day, he gave two coins to the innkeeper and asked him to care for the injured man. The Samaritan promised to pay for any additional expenses when he returned. Luke 10, 35. The good Samaritan in this story wasn't real. He symbolized something bigger. A religious man wanted to know who his neighbor was so he could justify himself. But Jesus changed the question. He used the Jews' dislike for Samaritans to teach a lesson. Everyone is a neighbor. So Jesus told this story to teach that being a good neighbor means helping anyone in need, no matter who they are. He wanted to show that love and kindness are more important than our differences. Jesus then asked the law expert, which of these three people do you think was a neighbor to the man who thieves attacked? The expert replied, the one who showed him mercy. Jesus told him, go and do likewise. Jesus and the Samaritan woman. Once Jesus was traveling and stopped to rest near a well in Samaria, a Samaritan woman came to the well to get water and Jesus asked her for a drink. The woman was surprised because Jews and Samaritans usually didn't talk to each other. But Jesus offered her something special, living water that could satisfy her spiritual needs. During their talk, Jesus revealed things about the woman's personal life, including that she had been married several times. The woman was amazed by Jesus' wisdom and asked him about the right way to worship, whether it was the Jewish or Samaritan. When the Samaritan woman asked Jesus about the correct way to worship, he explained that what mattered was worshiping God with sincerity and truthfulness in one's heart. The woman recognized Jesus as a prophet and then spoke of the Messiah. Jesus revealed that he was the Messiah. This revelation led many Samaritans to believe in him. The conversation showed that Jesus came to bring about a new era. Worship was no longer confined to a specific place or tradition. It was about having a personal connection with God, worshiping in spirit and truth. Jesus often interacted with Samaritans, displaying care for everyone, especially the poor and marginalized. Despite societal rejection, Jesus welcomed them, disregarding the opinions of religious leaders. He emphasized that the gospel message was for everyone, not just the righteous, but also sinners who needed to repent. The story of the Samaritans is complex. They faced oppression and hatred from the Jews because of their mixed religious practices. Despite this, the gospel brought hope to Samaria, and believers shared this message worldwide. After Jesus' death, resurrection, and ascension, Philip preached in Samaria, bringing healing and joy to many. The Samaritan story teaches us that we can find hope through Jesus Christ, regardless of our background. It reminds us that everyone can receive the good news of salvation, no matter who they are or where they come from. So that's all for this video. With that, we conclude another journey through the stories of the Bible, uncovering the mystery of the Samaritans and why they faced such hatred. What do you think of why everyone hated Samaritans? Comment below and subscribe for more such videos.